What is up, y'all? It's your girl, brand new, and honey, I am back in the building. Listen, this time, honey, I'm back for a recap of Bell Collective. And this is the season finale. I felt like the season finale was a bit underwhelming for me. I want to see the Bells go out of town. I thought that we were going to see that. So I want to see them go out of town. I don't want to see certain stuff that I saw this season on the next season. I don't want to see Glenn popping up no more. I don't think that's cute. I want to see Leticia leave him. That probably never happened. I want to see more like camaraderie whatever the damn word is y'all know what I'm talking about okay I just want to see more unity more more I don't want to say sisterhood because I know these happens ain't sisters honey I just want to see like I don't know I want to see these women um on vacation I want maybe a team building um workshop uh that they do together out of town somewhere I think that would be good I want to see them like together more I feel like it's always all the bells against one or against two it's like the same formula like every season I'm kind of over that I just want to see something new I want to see Tamara gone and somebody else in her place honey bring Antoinette back bring somebody else bring the melody lady whatever her name is you guys put it in the comments because I forgot her her real name but I'm just, I was like, ugh. But let's get off into it. So, Aikisha arrives late at her meeting with Marie and Essie about the Lupus Gala. She wants to change everything. She wants it to be more, like, relaxed, more, like casual she wants charcuterie boards um marie she making faces i'm like marie i thought you didn't really want to be involved like that i thought this was just uh essie and ikeisha's thing and you just wrote the check okay that was your job just to write the check but yeah marie was saying you know certain comments um to ikeisha well about ikeisha and her confessional she felt like ikeisha you know overstepped a bit kind of made everything into the way that she wanted to make it i wish that maybe next season ikeisha do her own thing because she really does give me like a leader and you know she's very forthright she she seems to know what she wants in terms of food um in, in terms of like everything like Aikisha got it going on honey okay that's why Willie made her his wife okay like Aikisha has vision so I just need to kind of see her by herself I do feel like when she is with other people there can be this sort of takeover spirit but I feel like I don't know I, I think she's just not used to like working with Marie and Essie um, maybe they just all don't work well together and people work differently. You know, some people move a little bit faster with stuff. Some people want to take their time. Some people want certain food or want a certain DJ or just want a certain vibe. And you know what I'm saying? So I think there was a difference of opinion with that. It, it seemed like Essie and her got along, but it's something with, um, I think there's something about Aikisha that Marie does not like. I think she feels like Aikisha talks a good game, but she don't back it up. She ain't did nothing for Ferris Street. She ain't did this. You even seen Latrice kind of make a little comment. She ain't did that. I feel like Aikisha has made some strides, you know, kind of more than what you have us have been to do. I mean, I'm just saying, been able to do. Okay, I'm just saying the truth is the truth and the truth needs and no proof. How you doing? I love Marie's uh, earrings and I loved her, her hair and that, um, child I, I just loved uh how her hair was in that meeting with Aikisha it was giving me Tony Braxton another sad love song honey yes
Marie said that this went from being a gala to a high school prom. I said, ooh, child, that Marie knows she's shady. Child, when it comes to Glenn and Cliff, I'm definitely getting this broke back mountain vibe from them. Like, um, I don't know. It seemed like they like each other. May, you know, maybe a little bit too much. I mean, I'm just saying, Glenn is planning parties. Latrice then forgot this nigga birthday. Girl, uh, you should be forgetting his damn birthday. Cause when y'all was in the confessional, he didn't even, he didn't even remember yours. That's embarrassing. And she thought the shit was funny. That's how I know when a bitch is in a burning house, she think the, that the shiggity that her, her man say is funny and it's really not, it's embarrassing. And it says a lot about y'all marriage, y'all relationship or lack thereof, okay? But yeah, I wish uh, a nigga would forget my birthday, okay? I would forget his ass. That is so disrespectful. And child, at this point, it makes sense for Leticia and Latrice to double date, to hang out with their men, because both of y'all honestly is doing the most for niggas that do the least for you all. Okay? Like, child, (laughs) just create a club already. Okay? Make it make sense. Glenn, uh, he looked nice in that yellow he had on. I'll give him that, but he still ain't shit. Okay? I said it. I just know that Cliff loved the hibachi. I just know that. What else you know about that nigga? He like it with the lights on or off, nigga? What else do you know? What else? (laughs) Child, they look like a fake ass, played out ass kid in play, child. So Latrice's friend, Mel, she's at the hibachi night. She tells Leticia that Tambra is pregnant. Uh, Leticia says she wasn't invited to Tambra's little, you know, spring bling gender reveal. See, that's why I want Tambra off the show because I feel like, and I'm not, and don't get me wrong, guys, I'm not saying that, um, Marie and Leticia should have been there, but I I just feel like she causes too much division. Her and Latrice. It's just too much division. We don't need that on this show. I feel like everything is so ambiguous. It's like there's no clear reason. Yeah, you upset about they met with the guy behind your back, but what else? It seemed like there's something else missing from this situation, right? She also didn't invite Marie to the Capitol. I think she has something to do with that. I could be by myself, but y'all put y'all comments in the comment section. I just don't trust the heifer, okay? I don't get a good vibe. Oh, the lady's name is Melanie. Melanie. Yeah, let's call Tambra typical Tambra, just like Leticia said. It's like, bitch, you do the same shit over and over again, and you wonder why don't nobody like you. Okay, you wonder why don't nobody understand, you know, your point of view, where you be coming from. Girl, bye. Next, we see Marie in therapy with her mother. She's a better woman than me. I would send this woman on her way and I would wish her well. You know, I wouldn't have any more time to waste. Uh, with her. I know some people are going to be like, girl, that's her mother, girl. That's her mother. You only get one and they only get one of you. And this lady, in my opinion, um, she's very like unaware of all the hell that she has put Marie through. Everything is always, yeah, but you had your dad. Every little girl needs their mother. So, yeah, she may have had her father, but she probably always felt like a piece of her was missing because, bitch, you was missing. So me personally, I just feel like you got to get to the point in life where you protect your energy. Life is all about self-preservation. And sometimes you have to preserve yourself, Marie, away from those that you love and love your mother from afar. Like, yes, she can get you know, checked into an addiction clinic, but I would like let her do stuff like by herself. I think that Marie is kind of using her mom's 
issues. That's kind of like her storyline. Maybe there's a bigger purpose. She wants to help other people. So I can understand it from that point of view. But this lady is, she's incapable. Shout out to Keisha Cole. She's got a son called Incapable. Incapable, incapable of loving me back, okay, and giving me what I need. Y'all remember when Keisha was talking about booby honey, okay, yes, but that's what I see when I look at her mother. Um, like she she's gonna get told a lot of good information, you know, a lot of helpful information, but I just feel like only she can change her ways and she has to want to. And to me, she's not healthy enough. She doesn't stay healthy enough. You know, she always runs back to, you know, her drug of choice or whatever, you know, she's doing. So I, I just wouldn't, um, keep dealing with her. Then you got Zuri, that, that type of stuff that breaks children's hearts. They be loving their grandparents, you know? So you just don't want to, I don't know. You just don't want to break your children's hearts too and get their hopes up and, you know, set them up for disappointment. Marie gets to talking about how not having her mom in her life, you know, that's been a void in her life. She used to fantasize about not waking up and, you know, not having her mom. And, you know, it's just really sad. You could still see the little girl in Marie. But like I said, I think sooner than later, she needs to let her mother go. Because what you're going to do is you're going to re- hurt yourself all over again because we have to see our parents as people as individuals I think sometimes we get caught up with mom and dad I remember one time I told my mother you are a woman that just so happens to be my mother and I was letting her know, I see what you do and I'm not here for it. And I'm not going to cling to you just because you are my mother. OK, I'm not going to cling to a title, to a hope, to a fantasy. It's, it's time, Marie, to take off the rose colored glasses and see this woman that just so happens to be your mother for who and what she really is. She's somebody with some issues. OK. So and I really, you know, give it to Marie because, honey, I would have been tired. OK, I just really would have been tired. But, you know, I get it. It's a touchy situation. Nobody wants their mother out here on the streets. But at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do for you and your daughter and your children, you know, and your grandchildren, you know. Where is uh, Jareus? Jareus, her son is cute. I didn't like that the mother kept telling her, well, you keep torturing me and girl, lady, she has you in there. This is why I couldn't be bothered because I wouldn't have that much uh, patience with her ass. Okay. Because I see what this is going to do. You know, it, Marie, just what you are trying to avoid, you are creating over and over and over again. She doesn't get it. Well, you keep torturing me. She's being defensive. She's being dismissive of your feelings. She don't get it. Okay? She don't get it. And this is the problem with people. They get fixated on who somebody is to them, on who gave birth to them. Her mom's addiction issues is a response to trauma. That's it. So whatever type of trauma, maybe she you know, was molested or raped or, you know, just there's something that happened and it's kind of like she just stayed in that one spot, you know? So this is the addiction is an escape from something that she's running from something, you know, she's not willing to deal with. So it's really sad, you know, to watch 
The therapist asked Marie's mother what's going to keep you from drifting back. She says she just won't go. That's not a strong enough reason. Nobody believes you. It's not convincing. She has, she needs deep, intensive healing. She needs a, a deep therapy session going back into her childhood because there's some type of trauma that happened. Maybe a parent died. Maybe you was taken away from a parent. Maybe you had to, you know, maybe you had to move and you never um, was able to make friends at a new school. Like everybody, you guys, has some type of has some type of trauma that they are dealing with that they, you know, have to live with, you know, for the rest of their life. And a lot of people, it, it keeps them stuck. It keeps them stagnant in, in one place, you know, it's like being on a stationary bike. It feels like you're moving forward in life, but you're really on a path of nowhere. So next we got Leticia and Glenn. She's getting her makeup done. She tells Glenn that all the bells got invited to the Capitol, everybody except for Marie. Latrice gets in her confessional. Child, it's like, Latrice, you are in a burning house. You over there coughing up smoke. <laughs> Girl, you need to call 911. You need to call the fire department. You are no better than Marie. You have slandered people on this show. You getting a cease and desist on her because you don't want her discussing your toxic, abusive marriage. Okay. Um, she gets to saying, yeah, the state of Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, they didn't want to be affiliated with Marie. For what? Well, all the stuff she's been involved with, like what? What did she do except for meet with Tambra's boyfriend? What else? What else? Like, what is it? I felt like she was not being like forthright on what really happened. I feel like if Tambra did have something to do with that, um, that causes a divide you know, within the collective, you know, so it, the truth go come out, it's go come out, but yeah, I didn't like what Latrice was saying, I'm like, bitch, you ain't no better than Marie, um, you're no better, honestly, ain't none of y'all perfect on this show, Marie has her faults, but ain't nobody perfect on this show, so Essie went to the Capitol on behalf of Marie and was trying to get some answers as to why, you know, Marie was not invited. Marie represents mental health. Like that's so important. That is such a important field to work in. I know I work in the field, been in this field for quite a long time. My mom um, is the one that introduced, you know, me to mental health, you know, she been doing this for over 30 plus years. So, you know, like Marie's like purpose on the show, the job that she does, it's a very important work. You know, it's very spiritual, like working and, you know, dealing with people's minds, dealing with people with bipolar, schizophrenia, anxiety, depression, like all of that stuff. That is so important. And to not invite that, to out of town i would just love the reason why look the reason why i can't get the words out why wasn't she invited to the capitol it just it's not making no sense so we see all the bells talking about it gucci telling jj gucci sound like she don't believe that tambra has something to do with inviting marie not inviting marie to the capitol she don't kind of believe that narrative Marie feels like it was Tambra because Tambra got connections to the state capitol. Leticia says if Marie wasn't invited, none of them should have went. You went anyways, girl. That's how it should have been, but y'all are not unified. There's a lot of division. You got Latrice helping with the divide. You got Tambra, her ass, really need to be off the show, helping with the divide. So, girl. Leticia is real sick, so she's trying to, like, get ready to go to the gala. I wish she would have, put, you know, pushed through, because I like uh, seeing Leticia in scene. 
And I think she would have probably been able to kind of calm Marie down, but she didn't end up going to the gala. Tacky ass Glenn. He was there though. Child. Ugh. The ghetto. He could have stayed at home. If I was Marie Tambra, her ass wouldn't have been invited to the gala. Okay. She wouldn't have been invited. Okay. But she has the audacity to show up and say, yeah, I, I've been trying to protect my energy, girl. It looked like the people need to be protected from you. You, you are the divide in this group. You are the shit starter. Okay. And I knew you were not about shit when you was at that table talking to Marie saying, yeah, I'll forgive her. Yeah, I'll move on. <laughs> it was like she said just enough just so they could change the subject. I don't like bitches like that. Fake, phony, fraudulent. Child. Hoppo, who this woman? Okay, get ass up out my face. I just want all the ladies to know that I do support everybody. And I do, I do, me and Greedy, we're having a baby. We have no relationship, but we're going to have this baby. And I got to protect my energy, even though I'm the bitch in the group that's causing the biggest divide. <laughs> Woo! So we got Aikisha on the mic, reconcising the city council woman, honey. They all look pretty in a purple. I love Aikisha's hair, love Essie's dress. Everything looked really nice. So Essie ends up reading the definition of lupus. Um, Aikisha's husband, he takes to the stage to talk about his mother and, you know, how the disease affected her. Marie takes the stage. She looked absolutely beautiful. Love the finger waves, love the dress, the earrings. She basically tells the people, honey, to, you know, take good care of yourself, eat well, make make sure you go on to the doctor, eliminate stress. I know the people is like, she the one that be creating stress. <laughs> she still is a human being with a personality though, guys. You, you gotta, you know. You got to know it, right? So all the bells, they get to uh, dancing, having a good time. Look at JJ in his suit, honey. He looked nice. What was the purpose of Glendale being in his confessional talking about, well, you know, I'm going to go and get Tambra some water. She didn't tell me she was pregnant and I didn't get an invite to her gender reveal. Why would you get an invite, nigga? She wasn't even... She didn't even invite Leticia. And then he keeps saying throughout the whole episode, ah, oh, you know how the women act. They so messy. They, nigga, you and Cliff ain't no better. Like, child, you don't get out of here, you damn hypocrite. Sit your ass down, Glenn. I saw Tambra complaining about the food. Y'all need to take that sh uh, shiggity up with Aikisha. She the one that made the menu. Okay, she the one that made the menu. So her and Latrice was kind of like complaining. And that wasn't, you know, the food that Marie wanted to serve. So hopefully they talk about that. Um, Essie comes to sit down. S with the mess, honey. She comes to sit down next to Latrice. Latrice start acting crazy. Oh, Essie about to come over here and check somebody. Girl, you need to be checked, shit. And you need to be running from your husband because we ain't forgot y'all dynamic this whole season. At least how it started out, it was more like Ike and Tina. Okay, we, we ain't gonna forget about him grabbing your ass up in the end bar and he popped up on you a few times. Okay, and was grabbing on your ass outside. See, Latrice want us to forget about all that. Lies. So Latrice get to popping her damn gums talking about Marie and how Marie need to watch how she treat people and that's probably why she wasn't invited to the Capitol and child shut up Latrice shit you on an island by yourself okay you ain't really got no friends on the show I cannot wait for them to uh, get her ass together at their reunion. So at that time, Marie is, comes over there right after Latrice say that shiggity. I wish she would have grabbed her ass up. 
Marie says that she not even going to try to defend something that don't even exist. Glendale said all of this is bigger than y'all egos. I'm with Marie. I feel like Latrice is weaponizing this situation to make it look like CCC. She wasn't invited to the Capitol. CCC, she, you know, she does all this mean, nasty and malicious stuff to people. CCC, she out here talking about my husband and how he treats me. Girl, we have seen this damn show. We see how he treats you. He treats you like a child. You can barely go out without him popping up on your ass and asking you why you going out for drinks with your friends and like you a grown woman. So it would be different, you guys, if Latrice was in a different type of a marriage, a, a marriage where she's being treated like an equal a marriage where she's being treated with kindness, dignity, respect, love, care, something like Willie and Aikisha, like and, and and Gucci and JJ, something like that. They they in the best marriages on the show to be all the way real. But it's like I don't like. That's why I don't like Latrice because she's a lazy bitch. Yeah, she may be known for working hard, but she gives me lazy Libra. They always try to like ruin people's reputations. They dark side it. Yeah, remember what Monique did to Candace, tried to get ahead of the story when you was the most aggressive person in the damn story. Yeah, they love trying to throw people under the bus, trying to make them look bad, but you end up making yourself look worse. Okay. So Aikisha and her confessional, which I didn't like, she gets to talking about, well, I don't know what the hell Marie trying to do. And Marie ain't did nothing yet. Why the hell you all on Marie? Well, this, this got Marie name on it. So the hell what? Y'all was talking shiggity. I'm, I got some shiggity to say too. So I saw where Aikisha was coming from, but Aikisha, you gotta be fair. You know how Marie is. Um, she was like alienated and isolated from the collective. She wasn't invited to the, you know, to, to the Capitol, you know, to go on whatever tour y'all went on. She is a bail. She's a, she's a bail that paved the way for you. Like the three most important bails to me on this show will have to be the ones that was here from day one. Leticia, Marie, Latrice. Those are the people that was here from day one. Tambra, ugh, no, we ain't even gonna include her, even though she was here, but whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just like, y'all gotta understand that. And I felt like uh, Aikisha wasn't being fair. It felt like everybody was attacking Marie and it's already a barbecue and it's like Aikisha and the rest of the girls was put more like lighter fluid on it like yeah let's make a bigger fire the lady already hurt upset embarrassed she was isolated from the collective and I know there there will be people saying well this is why and she should just be professional and child this is the last episode Marie is gonna clown she's gonna let you know how she feel Okay, so Marie gets to say, get ready for a defamation suit. Get your weight up. <laughs> she going off. So during that time, Aikisha and Gucci, they trying to get over there because the people at, the, you know, the guests, they starting to notice certain stuff, you know, starting to notice Marie getting louder. And, it, you know, it is kind of getting unprofessional, right? And Marie is in her feelings, but shit, she's in her feelings at her event. This is hers. Okay, and this is why I told y'all Aikisha should just do stuff by herself because she liked to, and I get it, you know, she's professional and, you know, she want to do stuff a certain way, but you can't control how her and Essie feel about this whole situation. As a matter of fact, Essie should have been invited to the damn Capitol too. God darn it, why not? You know, so Aikisha trying to, you know, just, take over things and trying to get the guests, you know, back in line, like, you know, trying to change the subject, child. I was like, ooh, child, poor Aikisha, honey, you, you by yourself, honey. So while Marie is saying that, Tambra is smiling, that bitch wouldn't have been invited. I, w I wouldn't have been, I would have been, uh, disinvited her ass. That's how I figure she has something to do with it, because, 
at the end of this, you're going to hear Marie say something to Tambra, and for Tambra to just walk off, oh, it's the wrong place, wrong time. Girl, shut your fake ass up. You know you had something to do with it, because you the way you was behaving, I was watching her. I was like, ugh. So Marie tells Essie, I'm not going to defend this. You can keep defending this. My only issue with Marie was... You kept trying to act like it wasn't a big deal, Marie, and oh, it ain't a big deal. Oh, it ain't this, and I ain't gonna do this, but you kept doing just that. Shut the hell up, okay? Shut the hell up and get back to work. Marie ended up going outside. Child, Akeisha said, I need us to focus back on why we here, child. <laughs> the ghetto. I'm not doing nothing else with y'all no more. That's what Akeisha said, honey. I wouldn't do nothing with Akeisha because she, you know, she just one of them people. She wants stuff done a certain way. And that's cool. But you can't do an event with somebody and this is their shiggity and take over like that. You just can't have that takeover spirit. You ain't Diddy? Okay, goddamn shit. We all gotta stay in our lane, okay? But I get it, you know, I get it. So Essie ends up talking to Tambra, saying the whole situation at the Capitol, it looks shady. Essie brings up some posts that um, Tambra made on social media. Here go Latrice. Oh, it wasn't shady. That wasn't shady that she said a few of the bills at the Capitol. Y'all were both being shady. Y'all keep trying to isolate uh, Marie from the circle. Y'all go find y'all ass. Look, shout out to Heavenly on the island by y'all self. Because the girls are not going to trust you. They already don't trust you. Don't like you, Latrice. Don't respect you because you in that burning house. Okay, you need to be calling the damn fire department instead of worrying about if Marie was invited to the Capitol. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay, it's just all the time, honey, it'd be these bitches in these burning houses. Okay, so Marie walks back over there and says to Essie, what are you trying to accomplish? She's just trying to defriend... I don't think she was just trying to defend Marie, but their business and, you know, Marie deserves to be included with the bells. And I agree. We got Glenn trying to act like a fake ass Martin Luther King all of a sudden. Nigga, you're more like JJ and not JJ on this show. Dino Mike. That's what you giving. You a clown. But he get to chastising the ladies to JJ. Well, they all queens. I can't believe they acting like this. Like, child, shut up, Glenn. Sit your ass down. So Tamara gets up to leave. Even her laugh, you guys, is just so fake to me. <laughs> I can't do the mess. Maria is just like me because I would have been waiting for Tambra's ass just like the goddamn security guard. I would have been waiting, waiting on your ass. I remember what uh, Robin Harris said at house party. He said, I'll be waiting on your ass like I'm one of the security guards. <laughs> so... Marie tells Tamara that was messed up what she did. Tamara plays dumb or maybe she's not playing. So Tamara says she didn't do it. I don't believe her. So Aikisha says she's over everything that has happened tonight with Marie. She is ready to go back to Jersey. So once again, Marie gets to talk about the issue again. I'm like, Marie, let it go. Let it go, Elsa. But she gets to uh, saying to Essie, Tamara says she didn't exclude me. I wouldn't have never did that to Latrice even though you know we got our issues Latrice was over there then I'm like Latrice you feel mighty comfortable being by this woman that you didn't serve this cease and desist to okay I wouldn't even be fooling with Latrice I would have walked the hell off soon as she would have came over there so Essie tells Marie the bells were just recognized as visitors. They just did a tour. Marie was like, oh, so did somebody pack them a sack lunch? I was cracking up. So Marie asks Essie, she just like, why you didn't been tell me this? Why you didn't tell me they was just, you know, seen as just visitors? And then um, Essie said that she just got so caught up with defending Hamilton Davis and, you know, that slipped her mind. And Marie was like, bitch, could have told me. I done made a fool out of myself. 
Okay, but I like Essie and Marie's friendship. I like that Essie had her back. She went all the way out, honey, to the Capitol to defend her friend and to defend their business. And I'm here for it. It's something to be said, you know, when, you, when you're rolling with somebody like Essie. So last but not least, we saw um, Marie take her mom to a treatment center. We got Gucci and JJ, um, JJ's daughters allowed Gucci, you know, to see the one's uh, baby. I forgot which one it was, child. We got Latrice. Her building is, you know, looking a lot better. It looks like it's about to be finished. She talking about her and Zaddy is doing, have come a long way from fighting in the M bar parking lot. Girl, you still in a burning house, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you to call 911 to put that fire out, girl. We see Tambra and Greedy, they get to talking about, you know, the possibilities of, you know, them being parents and they're excited about it. We see them doing some type of pottery class. I still feel like I don't know these people, okay? I don't know know nothing about them they relationship I'm not curious I may want to see how the baby look but that's about it we see Leticia she's doing a book signing is it on Ferris Street honey I think it is but she doing a book signing for that whack-ass book why side pieces is winning they not winning you need to write a book on being in a burning house okay and have Latrice co-write that mother brother Tucker uh with you okay <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm doing better. Okay, listen. <laughs> she need to co-write it, shit. Write a children's book, a follow-up book. That's what y'all need to be writing about. But, you know, I'm happy for Leticia, but I would love for her to love herself. Leave that man alone. He's toxic. He's immature. He's possessive, controlling, insecure. Like, girl, get rid of that fool. All right, you guys, it looks like the reunion is going to be coming up um, this Friday. So I think, yeah, y'all go see this on Friday. So it'll be on, I guess, that night. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am your girl, Brand New, and I will check you guys out in the next video.